Babies capture our hearts with a single look, a curious grasp of our finger. As parents and caregivers, it's our duty to keep these flourishing minds and bodies safe. Long before a child comes into this world, a flurry of electric activity is happening inside their young brain. The neurons that shape the way they will absorb and perceive the world have come online and are multiplying in rapid form. In fact, by the time a baby is born, it has nearly all of the brain cells it will ever have in its lifetime. It's estimated that over two million new connections are made in a single day. It's really amazing that over a period of one to three years, they're going to have 90% of their brain growth or organization done. Though a baby's abilities to perceive the world are being formed at a rapid pace, it will still be over a year until they can speak. Until then, crying is their only form of communication. As a parent or caregiver, life's other stresses can make a baby's crying difficult to handle. Sometimes even leading to shaking a baby in order to quiet them, which shocks the connections being formed inside the brain. You know, babies don't have words like you and I. They only have crying. So crying means anything. It can mean I'm wet, I'm hungry, I'm bored, I'm hot, I'm cold, I need to poop, I need my diaper changed, or maybe it's just exercising the lungs. Some babies just need to cry more than others. So as a parent, you have to figure out what that cry means. And sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. By shaking a baby, the brain, even if it has become partially organized, can become disorganized so that the organization that had gone on before in those sensitive parts of the brain uh, has been disrupted. Shaken baby syndrome is 100% preventable. The number one reason a baby is shaken is due to frustration from nonstop crying. When someone forcefully shakes a baby, the child's head whips back and forth, causing ripping and tearing of blood vessels and nerve endings in the brain, and tearing of brain tissue. And if you have a, you know, a high maintenance baby that's, that's very temperamental and you're tired and things all come together and you end up frustrated and then the frustration leads to action that you regret later. And that's what leads to a shaken baby usually. If you or someone you know shakes a baby, immediately call 911. Bleeding inside the brain can be treated. Immediate medical attention may save a baby from future problems or even save a baby's life. If you know there's, there's a potential, you could be frustrated. If you plan ahead and know what you're going to do when you reach that point, you can hopefully prevent yourself from getting in trouble. Try calming your baby by gently rocking them, singing, reading, or talking to them, securing the baby in a car seat and going for a ride, calling someone to take over for a while, giving the baby a bath, taking them for a ride in a stroller, or calling the 24-hour Crying Baby Helpline at 866-243-2229. This isn't personal when they're crying. They're not trying to make you mad. And sometimes you just have to stop and take a deep breath, reframe it, and get some help. Safe baby tip. If all else fails, put the baby down in a safe place and walk away. Be sure the baby is safe before you leave the room. Return only when you are calm and ready. It's important to talk to everyone who will be caring for your baby about the dangers and preventions of shaken baby syndrome. We are all aware of the impacts smoking can have on adults. When it comes to a baby, these impacts take place on a developing system that is brand new to this world. By not having defenses already built up, infants are more susceptible to the effects of the secondhand smoke and to the illnesses that come along with the secondhand smoke exposure. Smoking can affect their brain development, it can affect um, asthma, allergies, hay fever, all sorts of things. Short-term effects of secondhand smoke can cause health issues with your baby now, but the most detrimental effects can come later in their life. Long-term impacts on infants from secondhand smoke have to do probably with the long-term exposure that they're going to have, uh, which can lead to cardiovascular problems, uh, long-term lung issues, as well as uh, more likely 
that they are going to become smokers themselves and then have the issues that a smoker will have. A lot of people will smoke outside and think they're doing a lot of good for their baby, which they are, but then they'll smoke in the car and be exposed in the car. So remember, it's not just the home environment, it's the environment they travel in. It's also daycare, grandmas, it's other places too. It's not just the home where they live where you need to protect them from smoke. You can help protect a baby by making smarter decisions. This includes eliminating the dangers of secondhand smoke as well as thirdhand smoke. Thirdhand smoke is that particulate stuff that layers out and it's on everything. People think if they, if they leave the house and smoke and come back in that they've protected their baby, and they have, but they still have all that stuff on their clothes. The best thing you can do is have a baby in an environment where no one has ever smoked. Every baby deserves to grow up in a healthy environment. Help provide it for them by not allowing smoking in your home or car, making sure childcare providers and babysitters are non-smokers, and avoiding third-hand smoke by asking those who have recently smoked to wash their hands and put on fresh clothing before holding your baby. Safe Baby Tip For a child in your care, quitting smoking means giving them a chance at a healthier body and mind. They don't have a choice when it comes to second-hand and third-hand smoke, but you do. There are approximately 2,000 deaths per year uh, that are identified as SIDS deaths. SIDS is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. It's an unexplainable syndrome where children go to bed and they die unexpectedly, and we're not exactly sure of the cause, but we do know risk factors. Infants will be at an increased risk of SIDS if they sleep on their stomach, are around secondhand smoke, sleep in the same bed as their parents, or if they have soft bedding in the crib. Because we know so little about the real cause of SIDS, what actually stops a baby from breathing when he was fine, when he went down for his nap or went to bed that night, it's really important that we do everything we can to prevent SIDS. The rate of SIDS in the United States has cut down remarkably since we went to the Back to Sleep campaign. They're just little things, but we need to remain vigilant and continue to do them. Put the baby safely in the bed, flat surface, nothing else in the bed but baby. If we continue to do that, we can hopefully continue to cut the rate of SIDS. You can also help protect a new life by following these healthy baby guidelines, which include placing a baby on its back to sleep, using a safe sleep place, which includes using a firm mattress with a fitted bed sheet, wrapping a baby in lightweight clothing, never letting your baby sleep in a car seat when not in a car, and sleeping in the same room with your baby. SIDS is devastating to families. It can just destroy families. When a child is born, not only is a child born, but also you have this dream of what their future will be that's born, and it can be just devastating. Safe Baby Tip. By taking the right precautions, you can help prevent SIDS and keep your baby safe. It's only natural to want to have a newborn close when they sleep. Some parents and caregivers decide to co-sleep with the baby, which means sleeping in the same bed. They say it helps the baby fall asleep, is easier on nursing mothers, and that it promotes bonding between parent and child. However, the risks far outweigh the benefits. You know, as a father, I was tempted to, to have my baby in bed with me too, um, because you get tired at night, and you think it's easier uh, to take care of them when they're really close. Um, but that isn't necessarily the right mindset to have. What's easiest and being a parent just don't go hand in hand. Uh, what's right does and what's right is to not have them in the bed with you. If the baby's in bed with you, the baby's at risk of being suffocated, you roll over on the baby. People think they won't do that, they think they'll be fine, but they're either more tired than they think, they may have had a drink or, or medication, um, but even when they think they're safe, they may not be and they may roll over and suffocate the baby. Parents and caregivers have found that sharing a room in the first months of a baby's life simplifies the process of tending to the baby. 
If the baby's in the room with you, it's the same benefit. You can hear the baby, the baby's close for breastfeeding, you don't have to run down the hall to get the baby, but it's safer, the baby won't have the risk of suffocation. When sharing a room, be sure to always place your baby on his or her back to sleep to reduce the risk of SIDS. Don't place a baby to sleep in an adult bed. Always leave your child's head uncovered while sleeping. Make sure your mattress fits snugly in the bed frame so that your baby won't become trapped in between the frame and the mattress. Do not place a baby on a soft surface to sleep such as a soft mattress, sofa or waterbed. And don't place your bed near draperies or blinds where your child could be strangled by cords. Babies make funny noises when they sleep and you don't have to get up every time and do something. But you're there and you can listen and if they don't self quiet or go back to sleep you're right there to help them. And then you get good sleep. But initially sometimes it's an adjustment as you learn that. Follow the back to sleep rule by always placing your baby on their back to sleep. But when your baby is awake it's beneficial to get off their back and onto their tummy. Tummy time is when you lay a wide awake baby on their tummy and let them exercise. It's very important because they, they develop their neck muscles and their back muscles so that they can put their head up as the first step of crawling. It's important because if they don't develop those muscles, they're, they're slower to roll, they're slower to crawl. From the day your baby comes home, they benefit from two to three tummy time sessions each day. Tummy time can be supervised by a parent, by a grandparent, by a daycare provider. We like to do it when they're awake and not crabby. And how long do you do tummy time? When they start fussing and crying, it's time to pick them up. Or if they're falling asleep, it's time to pick them up. It can be anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Talk to your doctor or pediatrician for more tummy time tips. Safe baby tip. Share a room, not a bed. It's an exciting and meaningful adventure you're now embarking on. You'll be shaping your child's life with each choice, with every interaction. Make sure you follow these safe sleeping practices for your baby's safety. A baby comes into this world needing parents and caregivers to provide for them, to raise them, and ultimately to keep them safe. It won't always be easy, but they depend on you so that when they've grown up and are out in the world on their own, they'll have a healthy mind and body to live life to its fullest.